What's going on everybody? We have the meta snapshot for patch 13.12. This is going to be the second week. There was no B patch, but the meta has matured a bunch, so we are going to go over all the changes. And then after that, we'll go over how to play each and every one of these comps. So in the S tier, we have Yordles. No surprise there. They did bump up a little bit, but this comp is just completely broken right now, and it's super easy to play. Gunners, Zeri is a classic four cost unit right now. Deadeye, this is probably one of the more like flexible types of comps. And then Ionia Yasuo going to round out the S tier. In the A tier, we have Garen, Void Kaisa, Challengers, Echo Reroll. This is a new comp this week. Noxus reroll, Multicaster, also a new one this week, and then Shirima. Then in the B tier, we have Kalista, Karma, Rogue, and Demacia. And in the C tier, we have Teemo along with others. We are still working on adding more comps, uh, so we will be adding these throughout the week. So onto the Legend tier list, a lot of people were asking me like what Legends to pick and stuff, and it used to be hidden at the bottom, but I moved it up to the top. But keep in mind, like your Legend, it is important to choose a one you like, but there's very little difference between like a C tier Legend and an S tier Legend. So it really just comes down to personal preference. Like, yeah, some are slightly better than others, but you could always just have one less augment reroll. It's not that big of a deal. Just be sure that if you do pick your legend augment, you actually plan around using it because that's where most of its strength kind of lies. But in the S tier, this is the one that like all the top players are using right now, like 90 to 99% of them. It's Orn, Twist of Fate, and Poro. And then in the A tier, Master Yi, Vladimir, Pengu, and Earth. B tier, Lee Sin, Vagar, Ezreal, Caitlyn, Aurelian Soul, Draven, and then C tier, Bard, and Tom Kench. But like, it's all like the same. Worst case scenario, you just re-roll one of your augments. At the end of the day, better TFT player is gonna be able to navigate all the augments a lot better than uh, players that are worse than them. But definitely check out the legend guide if you have trouble on that. There's both the video and the written guide, bunnymuffins.lol slash legends. But let's move on into the comps. So, in the S tier, Yordle reroll, very easy to play. You just do the classic one cost reroll strategy and I added links to all the leveling patterns so you could just go ahead, click that right there and it takes you exactly through what you do for one cost rerolling. But essentially all you need to do is in the early game, reroll for Maokai, Viego, Tristana and Poppy. That's all you have to do. Get three of those four units to three star and then you just level up, add in Gunners, it's typically gonna be Jinx. After that, add in a Yordle, typically going to be Teemo. And then in the super late game, you could add in four Gunners by adding in Zeri and Senna, and then replace Teemo with Heimerdinger. That's like super, super late game. Don't really have to worry about that too much. But very powerful comp, because once you hit it, you just absolutely obliterate everything. And a lot of people think Tristana's items matter. They really don't. They just have to be like any attack speed, attack damage, and like maybe some healing item. So Hextech Gunblade Hand of Justice for healing is going to be great. Rage Blade, Death Blade, Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, Last Whisper, Runons, any offensive item that you could think of, it's going to be working well on Tristana. Just trust me on that. Don't stress out too much on the items. And then Maokai, just any tank items will do. The units themselves, once they're four starred because of the Yordle trait, they just kill everything. Oh, I just realized we had a list of all the items down here. And if you want to check out the full list, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta, going to have everything there for you. Uh, for augments, long distance relationship is probably the best one to get because both Maokai and Tristana are the only two units that matter in your comp. So getting that, buffing up both characters is super, super duper powerful. But there are a ton of augments that work out over there. You could either check out this picture up here or this uh, written thing down here. Well, let's move on into the next comp. These are a little more intricate. So let's start off with Gunners. Gunners are like pretty solid because you could play AD Flex into them. So you could either play the Gunner comp or the Deadeye comp, which we'll get into right after. Both of them use the same items. The one difference is that Gunners likes the Zeke's Heralds a lot more than the other comp, but both of them work out just fine. For Gunners, there are like three different variations of this comp. The first one is what you see here. This is the one we won over last week. But if we go into the team builder, I can show you some other ones. So you could take out Sejuani, Shen, and Lissandra and add in four Zon by adding in Urgot and Echo. After that, you could also add in Vi and then you get the Piltover. With the T-Hex, it's great if you get it in the early game because then you could lose streak a lot with it. And then you also still have like some extra random slot you could use at level nine. But these two are probably the primary versions that you could kind of play. As like your ninth unit or whatever, I do like running some random tanks. So adding in like a Scion is really nice because this comp lacks frontline, but it's still very powerful. The four Zon version for Gunner, pretty good. 
You could also drop down to two gunner or get like one of the plus gunner augments and then get rid of Senna or like you don't have her quite yet and just kind of do something like this. Four items for Zeri though, pretty much same story as Tristana, anything will do. A lot of people really like Rage Blade on a lot of different champions right now and it's definitely overrated. I'm not saying it's bad. Overrated does not mean bad. It just means it's overrated because people think it's like completely unplayable to not play the game without a Rage Blade nowadays, but that's just completely false. Rage Blade is really good at the start of every set because people don't know what they're doing and having some sort of stacking item uh, has always done well at the start of pretty much every TFT set I can remember. And then as the set goes on, people stop building it and only build it on champions that very specifically need it. But scrolling down a bit, good item holders at the start is Jin, Tristana, and Ash. Probably Tristana is the best one because she is also a gunner. Best emblem and spatula holders is probably Gunner Urgot. Uh, worst case, you do Echo or random legendaries. And then some good legends are like Twist of Fate and Bard because you could get a lot of Zeke's Heralds. The way to play this comp is just, again, flex AD. Just build AD items, build some tank items. Focus more on AD though, and then build Zeke's to kind of stack things up and then flex into either this comp or the Deadeye comp. Uh, so what is the Deadeye comp? The Deadeye comp is going to be Aphelios and Sejuani being the main two stars. There's also two different versions of this comp, so let's get into that. The one we have as our default is the four Deadeye, three Freljord version, but there is also the Ionia version. So you drop down to two Deadeye and you play this when you do get an Ari, because Ari plus Yasuo plus Shen give you three Ionia, and then Ari kind of becomes a carry of her own. Uh, you also play Taric oftentimes for Targon. You could play Taric in both versions too. Uh, it's not exclusive to this one, and this setup is generally pretty solid as well. For itemization, if Ari's two star, you want to like blue buff her and then she just destroys everything. Uh, but it's pretty rare to get that, so you focus on Yasuo items. So uh, Bloodthirster, Titans, going to be pretty solid for Yasuo there. Uh, I like Edge of Night as well. He gets like an extra stun off whenever he has that, at least for me but he's just a CC machine and completely unstoppable. The great news about that is that Urgot and Yasuo pretty much use the same items, so you could build the same items every time, which is why flexing between Deadeye and Gunner probably going to be the best strategy in this patch. Again, Aphelios items doesn't really matter. Uh, Rageblade is pretty good on him, but again, I think it's overbuilt. I'm still gonna build it in a lot of my games, so it, it's still overbuilt. And then I like having a lot of attack damage on him as well, because Deadeye works really well with attack damage. So stuff like Deathblade, uh, Infinity Edge, anything that gives attack damage is going to be perfect. We have a full list of those items down here. A lot of people say stuff like, oh, like you don't need Last Whisper because you have Freljord. But you have to remember that Freljord doesn't always last the whole fight. It takes like eight seconds for it to start. A lot of times like fights are already decided by the time eight seconds are in. And then it only lasts around like 10 seconds, I believe. So there's a lot of time during the fight where you don't have any armor shred. So that's why having a Last Whisper is sometimes nice. It depends who you're facing. Like a lot of teams, if they have like super heavy resistances, you need to add it in. But other teams, they don't run it. And then you're fine to just build whatever. The point I'm trying to make is don't be afraid to just build any items to get early game value because items matter a lot less than you think or like having very specific items. Uh, but yeah, play the same way you do for the gunner comp. You just build AD items. You use the same exact item holders as listed here. The advantage of Deadeye is that Jin is super, super strong, and then Ash is super strong, and then Akshan's super strong. I can't say the same about Tristana, Jinx, and Jace. Uh, they're not bad, but like, I feel like Jin, Ash, and Akshan are some of the, like, the best units in their cost level, which is, again, why it's so easy to play this comp and why it's so good right now. But that could change. Oftentimes, I see my Akshan with no items just doing like very respectable damage. So if you ever do get leftover items, definitely drop some on Akshan. Uh, but as with most comps, you kind of stabilize at around level 7, level 8, and then going 9, you just add in random legendary units to really cap out. The Ari build that I showed you is definitely one of the really strong late games that can be achieved with this comp. Uh, moving on into the next build, we have Yasuo Ionia. So Yasuo Ionia, this is just going to be 6 Ionia, and then generally you do 4 Challenger, but it could just be 2 Challenger. You don't have to have 4, and then you could just run legendaries instead of Kai'Sa and Kalista. You could add in stuff like Bastion for Shen. You could play a Heimerdinger to get some of his good upgrades. Uh, so you have a lot of different options there. If you ever get Ari 2 star, if she has blue buff, she completely obliterates a lot of boards. But at 1 star, she's good just to kind of mana read people. Yasuo is for sure the main carry of this comp, but you could secondary carry Kalista and then eventually swap her items onto Ari if you do get her upgraded. 
but I would only play this comp if you get like an early Yasuo with a Ionia start, because it's really hard to get some of the low cost Ionia units such as Aurelia and Jin. They're both pretty useful. So it's definitely much easier to just play this comp uh, right from the get go. Also, make sure to focus items on Yasuo because a lot of units, like the difference between one star Kaisa and two star Kaisa, it's big, don't get me wrong, but it's not as big as the difference between one star Yasuo and two star Yasuo. One star Yasuo ults once then dies, two star Yasuo gets like five ults in or something like that. Maybe not five because sometimes the fight ends before that point, but you're getting a lot of ults in whenever you have a two star Yasuo versus just a one star. You could also play this comp with Aphelios, so you could play six Ionia as you see up here and then replace the Kai'Sa with the Felios if you get a lot of AD items. You'd pretty much take out two challengers and then add in a Felios and Taric. So what happens here is that you get the Deadeye still from a Felios and Jin, you get Bastion with Taric, and then you just throw in all the AD items onto your Felios. So if you get AP items, go for Kai'Sa. If you get AD items, go for a Felios. If you haven't noticed the pattern yet, there are a lot of different versions of each build. It's not to say one is better than the other, you just have to play what shows up in your shop each game. It also depends a lot on what opponents you are facing. But let's move on into the next build, which is the Garen reroll. This is going to be the A tiers. A tiers are a little bit weaker, and I'd say the S tier comps, you play those maybe like 50% of the time, maybe 60. A tiers maybe like 30%, and then B tiers 10%, somewhere around there. It's obviously not an exact ratio, but this comp is super, super easy. You just go for three star Garen, you put BT and Rage Blade on him, and then you use either like your own third item or just use the Radiant third item if you have Demacia up, and then you just buff him with a lot of Zeke's Heralds, as many as you can. So if you do have like Twist of Fate or something like that, uh, because Twist of Fate allows you to get the Zeke's from the Augment and it allows you to custom build your items, just go BT, Rage Blade, and then like six Zeke's, all buffing Garen. Trust me, it sounds troll, but it definitely works. The way you play this is 3 cost reroll, so again click here if you want more info on that. You pretty much just slow roll at level 7 until you hit this board 3 star. That's really all there is to it, only go for this comp if you get a lot of Garens early. Like if you have 4 Garens somewhere in like stage uh, 3, like late stage 3, consider going for all out on this. If not, pivot into some of the other builds. Notice that a lot of these builds share the same items. You could use Rageblade and BT in the Garen comp, you could use it in this Yasuo comp, the Rage Blade could go on either Kai'Sa or Aphelios, or Kalista. Uh, it's used in the Deadeye comp, it's used in the Gunner comp. You could put BT in the Gunner comp on your Urgot if you're running the 4 Zon version with Piltover. Unfortunately, it's not in the Tristana comp, but Tristana comp is a 1 cost reroll, so you kind of commit to that a lot earlier so you don't build those uh, other items. But it's pretty much like some of the more flexible items, even though it's not the best item. But on Garen, it's definitely his best item, so that's the one distinction I want to make. On the first couple of comps, Rageblade is nice, but it's not the best thing ever. But in the Garen comp, it's 100% required because uh, he just spins and gets a lot of stacks and deals a lot more damage that way. But yeah, pretty much just slow roll for 3 star, that's really all you have to do here. I have a game coming out on this, so definitely subscribe below if you have not already to kind of check out that game for this comp and a bunch of other comps that are going to be coming really soon. And next up, we have Void Kaisa. So Void Kaisa, again, has a couple different versions. The one I'm looking at now is the 6 Void version. Let's click on into this. This version is great, but sometimes you don't get like uh, the Void spat. I prefer running like 8 Void, definitely, with a plus 1 Void. Uh, but let's say you have a game where you don't get Belveth. When you don't maybe have a plus 1 Void, what should you do instead? So what you could do is just play 6 Bruiser instead with the Renekton and the Vi. This is another very powerful comp because you provide a lot of frontline for your Kai'Sa and then she eventually whittles everything down and then kills everything. You also can use the same item combination because you're running Yasuo, so you could just do uh, tank items on Sedge, attack speed and AP items on Kai'Sa, and then the bruiser items on your Yasuo. For this one, you do standard leveling pattern. Uh, item holder is generally going to be Malzahar, and then you sell Malzahar, throw it onto Vel'Koz, then sell Vel'Koz, find a new one, place it onto Kai'Sa. But you generally only want to play this with a strong bruiser start, or with a Void start in the early game. Obviously, if you get plus one Void, this comp becomes like uh, one tier higher, but that doesn't happen all the time. Late game, you're gonna win out with Belveth. Belveth is incredibly powerful. Maybe not as good as other legendaries, but she could use a lot of different items, which is definitely really nice. Next up, we have the Challenger build. So Challengers, they're decent, but they're nothing like super insane. Uh, what's good though, is that you have a lot of secondary carries. 
So you duo carry Kai'Sa and Yasuo, and then you tertiary carry Kai'Sa. So if you're able to get only offensive items, which is really good in the meta right now, defense items are kind of whack right now, you'll never have a shortage of people to kind of item up. If you do end up getting a lot of items on your Kalista, either because the region has a lot of items or you just get a lot of item augments, go ahead and run Gwen over Aatrox because you get Shadow Isle that way. Shadow Isle is really good for Kalista and Kalista really stabilizes its comp super hard. And then the other way to play the Challenger build is to actually just reroll for Kalista, get her to three star and then play two or four Shadow Isle. Overall, this comp is pretty solid. Nothing crazy. It's not my first pick, but if you get the game for free, it definitely is winnable in a lot of cases. Next build up we have is Echo Reroll. This is kind of one of the newer comps of the patch. It kind of developed like midway through the week, but Echo with Jeweled Gauntlet plus two healing items is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly powerful. Pair that up with a Katarina and then you just kind of AOE everyone down. So the way to play this is obviously going to be three cost reroll because you want three star Echo and three star Cat. Uh, Jeweled Gauntlet's the only required item. After that, you just... I prefer Hodge because Hodge gives critical strike chance. So if you have Jeweled Gauntlet pl plus two Hodges, it gives you healing and 100% crit. But if you have Gunblade or BT, it's like okay too. Uh, alternatively, you could just use like full damage as well. Uh, generally going to be pretty nice as well. But if you have a Piltover start early and have AP items, this comp is very, very powerful because you get the T-Hex going and Echo's going to be going too. But pretty much get to level 7 as safely as possible with big economy, then slow roll to 50 gold every turn, and then find a time to all in. This build is definitely incredibly fun to try, so definitely do this uh, in case they change it before the next patch. But yeah, you also throw in 3 Freljord because why not? Uh, but the main stars are definitely going to be just Echo and Katarina. Next build up we have is Noxus Reroll. Noxus Reroll is very powerful with Darius carry, but it's also powerful with Katarina carry. So whoever you 3 star first, that's going to be your main carry. I personally prefer Darius a little bit more, but having them go in tandem is really, really nice. The only downside about this build is that it's incredibly hit or miss because the difference between 2 star and 3 star Darius and Katarina is so big, I can't even describe it. So if you have some sort of Econ Augment, it makes this game a lot easier because it helps a lot with getting 3-star Katarina and Darius. But moving into how to play, item holders early game are going to be Samira, Kled, and Cassio. Best Spat and Emblem holders is going to be Azir and Nasus for Noxus. Uh, Azir gives Strategist, which is really nice with Swain. Nasus is a Juggernaut, so he's pretty chillin' there. And then Juggernaut Emblem is definitely going to go on Cat because she's going to be like one of your main people. But playing Noxus is a bit weird because you want Noxus stacks and you can't get them unless your team is strong. So it's very, 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 very snowball-y. So keep that in mind. This comp is really risky to play. And I guess for some people, that's what life is all about. Uh, items for Katarina, just generic like assassin items that deal a lot of damage and one healing item. Darius is going to be Bloodthirster plus two damage items. Probably the best builds for Darius. It really depends on your matchup. Titans is really solid. Giant Slayer is really good so he doesn't get stuck on a tank. But something like Infinity Edge is also really powerful because him critting on a spell gets him a lot more resets. It's kind of like Viego from last set. You build crit on him because of resets. And if you just high roll one of the crits, you can often just steal a fight. Uh, next build up we have is Multicaster Reroll. If you get the right augments and like big economy, this comp can be really powerful. But again, similar to most three cost rerolls, it's very, very risky to play. But if you hit it, you're amazing. This one is 4 Multicaster, 4 Sorcerer. Uh, I think 4 Multicaster definitely makes this comp like super duper 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 powerful. All of the Multicasters do stuff, so Velkos does damage, Talia does CC, Sona gives the buff to your team, and then Teemo, he wounds people. So each one of them contributes something to the team, which is something that can't be said of a lot of other synergies. Worst case, you could always pair this with like a Lux secondary carry. Lux on her own is very solid. And then the synergies just kind of like synergize with themselves. You get 4 Sorcerer with Taric and he provides tank line and Swain. Swain also gives Strategist with Jarvan and Teemo. And then Jarvan also gives you Demacia for your Lux or your Sona. So there are a lot of different options to choose from. The way to play this build is just slow roll at level 7 as with most 3 cost reroll. The only difference is you're going for different units. Items for Velkaz, 1 mana regen plus 2 damage is generally going to be preferred. Either blue buff or Shojin will be fine. And then... Two damage items or like a gun blade just to kind of give your team a little more survivability. Uh, next build up we have is the Shurima build. A lot of people ask me what my favorite build is so far. Mine personally is going to be Shurima. Azir I think is really cool as a concept. 
Uh, Rageblade, very powerful on him. I do not think Rageblade is overrated on Azir. It's very good. Um, I think it's one of his best items, if not his best. But it's not mandatory at the same time. I've seen Azir's pop off without it. The reason why it's a little lower on the tier list is because it requires you to hit a lot of different units. There are also two different versions of this build. The 7 Shurima one is listed out here, but there are also 5 Shurima and 3 Shurima versions. So in 5 Shurima, you could take out Cassiopeia, you could take out Renekton, and what you could do instead is add in Jarvan and Ryze. Ryze is obviously really good for your late game, and then Jarvan, he just AoE stuns. He's never bad to have on any team. The 3 Shurima version is when you take out Akshan and Talia, and then you add in Lux and Garen. So what this does is it gives you a secondary carry in Lux, and it gives you the CC unit in Jarvan, and you get Juggernaut for your Nasus. What you end up doing is itemizing Azir and Lux, put them near each other, Lux reduces their magic resistance, and then these two units do a ton of work together. So a couple different builds you can try. You could also add in Tarek to give you Targan and Sorcerer instead of the Shen, and then Rise could just be literally any unit after that. You're honestly running so many different traits that could benefit from a plus one synergy, so you could always mix and match to add in extra units to fit in your team. But this comp is pretty decent, it's pretty flexible, it's just not the strongest right now. But I would put this comp on the back burner right now, there are many better things to play, but perhaps the Demacia version is probably the best one right now. Let's move on into the B tier, Callista reroll. We talked about this a little bit before, but you want to do 4 Shadow Isle, 4 Challenger. It's important to get 4 Shadow Isle because she gets like so many more spears that way. Rageblade, definitely a must on her because she literally revolves around an auto attack, so she's pretty much an on-hit champion. But this comp is so risky to play because you're playing 3 cost reroll and your only 3 cost unit is Callista, so it's not that efficient. Only go for this if you have like a lot of baby Nikos or baby champion duplicators, whatever you call them or if you have Think Fast or something like that. Uh, very solid build though if you do get it, but super risky. Karma reroll, also very risky, but I think this one's a little bit more powerful and more consistent. It just revolves a lot on items. You want three pure damage items for Karma, or have a slight amount of healing with Gunblade or Handed Justice. The only thing you want to avoid is mana items because you have run six invokers. When you run six invokers, you don't need stuff like blue buff or Spear of Shojin, so you just want her to be popping people all day instead because you get all your mana from Invoker. Very rare build, I would only go for this with some sort of like big Econ Augment, because uh, there are much better 3 cost comps to play, and honestly, even better AP comps to play. Rogue Reroll, super good, but only play it in certain scenarios. You could do either Zed or Katarina carry, it really depends on what you're getting that game. I think Katarina is much better, but she's much harder to hit, and then you run Echo as like kind of your main tank. However, with Katarina, there are better versions of her build. I think the Noxus one is a little bit better, so I don't really care that much about going like for Rogue, for example. Uh, next up we have is the Demacia build. This one's with Lux carry. Lux is a little garbage right now. Uh, she's good as like a secondary carry. As a primary though, leaves a lot to be desired. So if you want to play Lux, maybe do the Sharima build that we were kind of looking at before. Um, after that, we have the C tier, and that's just going to be Teemo reroll. I tried this a couple times, and... Yeah, <sighs> has not worked out. It's not the best, but if you really like Teemo, just try it, I guess. But there are many other comps to go for. And yeah, I just don't personally recommend this that much. But just to summarize this tier list, we have, again, like just play the AD Flex, Gunner's Deadeye. Uh, one strategy I see is building like all the bruiser items and the attack damage items. So you build like Rage Blade, Bloodthirster as like your two core items. And then you can mix in stuff like Giant Slayer or Titan's Resolve. And pretty much all you do is put Rage Blade on your backline, put BT on Yasuo or Urgot or Garen. And then you just have an easy way to kind of have all the items for all the top comps. Uh, that's gonna be like the bread and butter I'd say for most things. One way to do that is just use Twist of Fate and use Pandora's items every single game. I personally prefer Poro the most, uh, but it seems like a lot of people are switching over onto Orn right now. Orn seems to be like the flavor of the day, at least at the time of recording. Despite all that, it doesn't mean that the other comps are not viable. It just means that they're a little more situational than all the S and A tiers. But if you do have any questions, do comment below and leave like a timestamp or like bring up which comp you have a question for. I'll try my best to answer it. Uh, or you could head on over to my stream, twitch.tv slash bunnymuffinslol, because I have been streaming pretty much daily, and you could always ask me questions there. 
Uh, but that is going to be it for me today. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what your favorite comp is. And the tip of the day is going to be Rageblade is pretty solid, but it's not the best item. People are definitely overrating it. At the end of the day, you can only build what items you're given. So just slam items if they're listed anywhere in like the sections over here uh, for whichever comp you're playing. Uh, but that's going to be it for me today. Hope to see you all next video. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gain before the next video.